In this video, I'm going to show you how to use DBMS X plan to examine the execution plan for complex or long running queries. I'm using DBMS X plan instead of the explain plan command because I want to look at the actual execution plan used rather than the potential execution plan, which is what the explain plan command shows you. So the first thing we need to do is execute the query, which I've already gone ahead and done. It's a three table join between big table T2 and T1. And then to see the actual execution plan, we need to do a select from the supplied package DBMS X plan. And I'm going to call the display cursor function within that package. So let me just scroll back up so you can see the command that I actually used. I used select star from table, which is a table function to that table function. I passed our function call that we want to make, which is DBMS X plan display cursor. You'll notice that I didn't supply any arguments to that. So what it's actually going to display is the execution plan for the last SQL statement that was executed in this session. Since that's our three table join that we're interested, in, that's all good. So what that command will actually return, it gives me the SQL ID, the child number. So the child cursor number that we're examining, it shows me the SQL text that was used, gives me the plan hash value, and then it gives me the execution plan in terms of a table. And underneath that table, you'll see the predicate information for this particular SQL statement. And you're able to relate that predicate information to the information in the table by looking out for these little asterisks at the start of the particular lines in the execution plan. Each asterisk indicates that there is a corresponding entry in the predicate information below. And that information will tell you which part of the where clause is used or executed at that step in the plan. So for example, if we look at line two, it says it's a hash join. If we want to know what tables are being joined together at that point, we can come down here to the predicate information and we see B, which is our big table is being joined to T1. And we can see the two columns that are being used in that join. Now, in order to determine whether or not this is a good execution plan or not, the first thing I would want to do is compare the estimated number of rows that the optimizer thinks is coming back from each of the operations in this plan with the actual number of rows. Now, by default, DBMS X plan display cursor does not actually show you that information. It only shows you the estimated number of rows. In order to get that additional information, we're going to need to add a hint to our SQL statement. The hint we're going to add is called gather plan statistics. And what it's actually going to do is record the execution statistics. So the actual number of rows that was returned by each of the operations in the plan, as well as the actual elapsed time for each of those steps. So we can easily pinpoint if we've got any cardinality misestimates and also which is the longest running step in the execution plan. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. As I said, we need to do two things actually. First, we're going to add a hint to our SQL statement. The hint, as I said, is called gather plan statistics. In order to actually see that additional information that's being recorded now as part of the execution, we need to add a parameter to our DBMS X plan display cursor command. And the parameter we need to pass is actually part of the format parameter. And we're going to pass all stats last. All stats last tells Oracle to show me the statistics that it recorded during the last execution of this cursor. And if we now look at the execution plan that we get, the table is quite different now. Um, you still see the operations just as we had before. Um, you still see the predicate information and the asterisks. But instead of seeing the rows column as we had before, now we have the E rows and the A rows, the estimated number of rows and the actual number of rows. By examining these two columns together, we can see whether or not the optimizer made good cardinality estimates for this SQL statement. Now, if you're panicking and you're thinking, I can't add a hint to my SQL statement, you can check the cardinality estimates to see if they are correct by simply doing a select count star from each of the tables and applying the appropriate where clause predicates to those queries. 
The other useful piece of information that came when we asked Oracle to show us the execution stats for our SQL statement was the A time or the actual time it took to execute each of the steps in the plan. And it's very obvious when you look at that, which step in the plan is taking the most time. In our case here, it's step four, which is the hash join between T2 and big table. That's where the majority of the time is being spent. Um, we can also see how much memory is being used uh, as part of that step. But you may also notice that we're actually missing some of the columns we originally had in the plan. If I scroll back up, you may notice that the cost column, which is quite important if I was trying to compare two different execution plans to each other, and the bytes column have disappeared. It's no problem to get that information back. We simply need to add some additional clauses to the format parameter when we call DBMS X plan display cursor. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say we want to get the cost and the bytes back. What we're going to do is we're going to now select star from table, just as we did before. Again, calling our function DBMS X plan display cursor. This time I've given it the SQL ID just so I don't have to continue to repeat the SQL statement over and over again. And I'm giving it a new value for the format parameter. I'm still asking it for all of the statistics gathered on the last execution, but I also want to see plus, plus cost plus bytes. So if we now look at the execution plan that I've got, you'll see that there's the E rows. We now have E bytes, so the estimated bytes, and we have the A rows, the actual number of rows and the actual time it took to execute each one of those steps in the plan. So all of the information that we had previously and a little more. Now, one of the other things I really like to ask DBMS X plan for when I'm examining a much more complicated execution plan is the outline. The outline for an execution plan is actually a set of hints that can be used to reproduce that plan. And inside that set of hints is a lot of useful information. It'll tell us things that most of we can see here in the plan. How are the tables accessed? How are they joined together? What is the join order? Now, when it's a simple three table join like we see before us, it's pretty easy to figure out the join order based on the indentation in the plan. Where it gets complicated is if I have a very large plan that perhaps has hundreds of rows in it, it's very hard to see that indentation. And the outline is actually going to show me the exact join order that was used, as well as what other kind of optimizer transformations may have happened during the execution of this SQL statement. If you're not familiar with optimizer transformations, what actually happens when you execute your SQL statement is the optimizer looks at that statement and it may choose to rewrite it so that it can get a better execution plan. And we call that rewriting of your SQL statement a query transformation. And so the outline will be able to tell us what transformations have occurred. So how do I get the outline? Well, let me show you that. I again add some additional values to my format parameter in order to get the outline. So same command as before, select star from table. Again, I'm calling the DBMS X plan display cursor function, giving it the same SQL ID, but I'm changing the values that are going to the format parameter. I'm stu still doing all stats last, but now I'm adding a plus outline. And what that's actually gonna show me is underneath the execution plan, is a complete list of hints that are used to reproduce that plan. And we call that the outline data or the plan outline. So most of it is pretty straight, straightforward. What optimizer version am I using? What database version am I using? And where, what access methods were used to access each of the tables in the query. But here's the interesting one for me. That's the join order. It's done using a leading hint, but that's effectively telling me the join order in our SQL statement. So the first table actually accessed is T2, and it joins to uh, B, which is our big table, and the result of that join is then joined to T1. 
All of the join methods used in this plan were hash joins, which we could, of course, easily see from the plan table. And the last line there of the outline gives us a little hint about one of the query transformations that has taken place. It's called swap join inputs, and it effectively turns Oracle's traditional left deep tree into a right deep tree. Now, don't worry about what that means. If it doesn't make sense to you, don't panic. You don't need to understand it in order to be able to figure out what's going on. It's just an indicator to what transformations are happening. So we've gotten a lot of information now just by using DBMS XPlan Display Cursor and supplying different values for the format parameter. There's one last value that I want to show you because it can be quite useful if you have SQL statements that use binds instead of literal values. If you've got a SQL statement that's using bind variables instead of literal values, then you might want to see the actual bind values that were used for a specific execution. And DBMS XPlan Display Cursor can show you that if we supply the right value for the format parameter. Let me show you the same SQL statement, this time though using bind variables instead of literal values. So if I scoop back up, what we'll actually see the same SQL statement that I used before, but the last two WHERE clause predicates now use bind variables instead of literal values. And when I go and retrieve the execution plan, I'm going to supply additional values to my format parameter. So I'm still asking for all stats last, give me all of the execution statistics for the last execution of the cursor, but I'm asking it now to give me the peaked binds. So what were the bind values that you peaked and used when executing this query, as well as the cost, as well as the bytes. So as you can see, you can keep adding additional values to that format parameter to get as much information as you need from the DBMS XPlan display cursor. If we scoot down and look at the plan, you get to see, as we had before, the estimated rows, the estimated bytes, the cost, the actual rows, the actual time. And underneath the plan table, you get to see those peaked bind values. Now it's done based on position. Um, rather than on the bind variable name. So you do need to understand your SQL reasonably well to be able to figure this out. But the first bind that was used in the statement had the value table. The second bind had the value SSB in our particular query. I hope you found this video on how to use DBMS XPlan Display Cursor useful and will be able to take advantage of the hints and pointers that we've shared the next time you've got to tune a long-running or complex SQL statement.